Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Almost 30 Podcast. What's happening, people? We're so glad you're here. Our community, thank you for being here, for listening to the show for as long as you have. And if you're new, grateful that you found Almost 30. This is a place where Krista and I bring our own learnings and curiosities. We interview our favorite spiritual leaders, healers, experts in health and wellness, uh, in the relationship realm, and so much more. And yeah, we, we've learned a lot ourselves. So our intention is that you come here and just glean what you need to glean, have fun, and connect with one another. And I've been beaming. I'm so excited to record this intro for our new best friend, Melissa Wood Tepperberg. Freaking love her. Freaking dude. We were... You guys, you're in for such a treat. This is her favorite interview she's ever done, if I am taking the words from her mouth. (laughs) But we just had so much fun and it was so beautiful to meet in New York. And just like after years, you know, we've been kind of in contact with her amazing team, Dylan, for a while. And we finally got to meet at the perfect time. It was on a Friday afternoon. We had been in Hudson Valley writing our book. So we were kind of like, yeah, just like had been in the book portal, came back in the city. I was in my own moment um, and, you know, just got to meet at the perfect time and just fell in love with her. She's incredible and magnetic and kind and cool and interesting and very Sagittarius. I just, I love a Sag. Um, and so you guys she are going to feel. She's, she a, Leo? she's a Sag. I don't know why I thought she was a Leo. I could see that, like a Leo rising. Maybe she's a Leo rising. Yeah, totally. If I'm wrong, you guys, just call the cops. Just call the cops, fire me, get rid of me. But I think I'm pretty sure that would be embarrassing. And that would be such an astrology thing where you like think there's someone, you're like, I love them for this. And then it's like not even <laughs> what it is. <laughs> it's like, okay. like, But she's, yeah, just kind of the mover and groover part of her. Um, so if you're from her community, we're so grateful you're here. It's just a joy and a pleasure and you're going to really, really love this one. We talked about her journey building her brand. We talk about what inspires her. We talk about her journey with her body and finding food freedom, which I always love to get into. And we talked about you all, the community, the community that she supports and loves and how much she truly cares about each and every one of you, which is something that we very much feel. So it was good to relate on that because I think there's a lot of people in the space, obviously, that want to create or have a brand or have a podcast or have a business. And you don't always meet people that really care about who's on the receiving end. And so when you do find a kindred heart, it's so good. Yeah, we felt we felt that love so much. She she gets emotional in this conversation about that. Um, and I think, you know, I'm always just blown away and maybe I should stop being blown away. But, you know, when we meet people in person, mm-hmm. sometimes you don't know if they're going to align with what you think they're going to be. And like she was that and more. And yeah. it was just like, man, oh, man, like this is also part of the recipe for success. You know, like I think that aligning who you are with how you show up and the work that you do, like it's all felt. So it all made sense to me. (laughs) You know, I was like, this is truly part of the reason why you are successful because you really truly um, walk your talk. And yeah, I just, I adored her. She just made us feel so loved and seen. Hopefully we did the same for her, Um, but this conversation is deep. It's, we have some really funny moments. Um, She gets incredibly vulnerable, but I think you are going to love just hearing this side of Melissa Wood Tepperberg. I don't know if she's always, you know, kind of showing this side. I think she gives it in little doses, but this is a really special one. Mm-hmm. And she has melissawoodhealth.com. She has MWH, which is a platform that helps to make mindful movement accessible and attainable for all. So they have workouts and meditations, nutrition and lifestyle. And then she has her amazing Instagram, Melissa Wood Health. She has her podcast and she is a woman about the world. She is a mama. She is a wife. And she's someone that we just are now in love with. I've been loving the classes. So I do mm-hmm. like at-home classes quite a bit and I adore the platform it is sleek it is thorough in the sense that like there's something for everyone it is constantly being updated with new classes I just it's chef's kiss it's not easy to do 
in the digital platform world of fitness and she has done it so right. Yeah, it's so nice now to do more gentle workouts that you can do at home. I think for so long I was like, if I do it at home, it's not as effective. I'm not going to be getting as much out of it. But now it's not always about the most intense or being super sore or like just that cortisol spike that I think I used to chase before. It's just about having an effective workout that takes 20, 30 minutes, whatever, and getting in it at home has felt really good. I was at um, a class in LA a few weeks ago and I was like, my guides were like, you know, we got to we don't want to do this anymore. They're like, it's just too much energy shared with people all the time. And it's just another space where you're going with a big group of people that you don't know with shared energy. And I'm already around a lot of people all the time. And it was like, can we just have workouts be just us? (laughs) Mm -hmm. And there's also something I'm feeling claustrophobic in spaces like that, where they're really small and like dark and all these things. I'm, I'm actually like, feeling like I want to be outside. I want to be in the sun or I want to be in my living room where it's like nice and bright and just wanting to be in more natural light, you know, fresh air or in a space that feels really good and easy rather than like in these like boot camp workouts where it's like for seven years I've been preparing for war and I've been going to boot camp and like just like going after it. I feel like I saw a tweet Basically, the sentiment was like, by the way, we've been working out like Mm -hmm. are women going to fucking battle? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like we're all jacked and ripped and we're all. Where is the Civil War? Yeah. We we need to be all us women need to be recruited that have been on like the classes game for so long because it is crazy the way that people the way that we approach working out, especially when you travel and go to Europe or go all over the world, like not a lot of cultures really approach workouts in the same way that we do, where it's really like fitness as a culture. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously people are going to DM me and be like, what about Greece? Or like, what about whatever? And it's like, it's just different in the States. (laughs) And um, we've really been working out. Yeah. We've made it a part of like our right. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, an addiction to doing hard things that we have that are like, if I do this, then I will experience this or feel this or achieve this. Yeah. And it's like, when it comes to working out, I think there's definitely times where you can challenge yourself a hundred million percent. I get it. I understand the science, but then there's also like the joy of being in a body and moving in that way. And I, I feel like with Melissa's platform, there's that there is like just a fluidity and a softness and like a reverence for the body and the way that she and the other instructors teach class and the moves that they do. It's just, there's nothing that I feel that I'm like, why are we doing this? It just all feels very intuitive and natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what it's about. I mean, I was driving from a workout to a hike with someone the other day and I was like, just kind of bringing conscious awareness to my day. I was like, okay, I did this. How does this feel? I'm going here. How does this feel? How do I feel in this moment? And the car is really good for that. And I was leaving, I was on this and I was like, does working out every morning feel like it's still needed in this version of me? Does it working out every morning still still feel like it's a routine that I'm just doing unconsciously now because it's habit? And does it feel like something I want to continue to do? And so I'm kind of thinking about that. I'm like, do I want to continue waking up every morning and not every morning, maybe four days a week, whatever, and working out right away? And I'm like, I don't really know. I don't know if if that's feeling like the most alive thing because now I'm really loving working in the morning. We're writing our book. Mm-hmm. So I'm loving to write our book in the morning. It feels like mm-hmm. super easy to tap in. It's less distraction. I usually get up really early and it's quiet. And so now I'm like, hmm, do I want to, not work out as much? Do I want to work out in the afternoon? Do I want to work out in the evening? What kind of flow do I want? But I think with all routines that we have, whether it's health and wellness or spiritual even, really just continuing to bring conscious awareness to it because then we're not really getting the benefit out of it if we're like sleeping our way through it, if we're just doing it because we feel like we have to, or we're just kind of feeling like we have to check a box off. It's Mm -hmm. not really giving us, you know, the full results and experience that we originally set the intention for when we started doing it. Yeah, I completely agree. I've been trying to switch it up a little bit because I felt super off and stagnant. And I think, you know, we have to be aware of that with our routines, like when they kind of expire and then how we can inject a little bit of new or maybe 
just change the order of things. I've also been doing work first thing in the morning and I'm like, oh, this is the shit. I also realize how, um, how distracting the day energy is like meaning, you know, the nine to five or like, cause the city's buzzing, the emails start flowing, the texts, the slack, the whatever. And just, you know, I can do my due diligence to try and limit distractions, but it's hard. It's like, you're kind of swept into this energy. So if we can kind of work outside of that or right outside of that right now, I think that's like, that's where I'm finding the most flow. Yeah. The phone slack email combination is pretty deadly. I think the text thing, I want to get a new phone. <laughs> I'm like too new many number. people have my number. Here Everyone needs to, we need to chill. Um, but yeah, you guys are going to love it. We should just get into this episode with the amazing Melissa Wood Tepperberg. And if you love this and you know someone else that loves it, would love if you would share this with a friend. That's how we've grown the podcast from the beginning is by word of mouth, by all of y'all just loving what we do. And if you would like, you can subscribe to the pod either on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. It just makes it really easy to have amazing new content that's going to support you in your journey in life on your phone every single week. We have 600 more episodes that you can dig into. We've been doing this for about seven years now. And then we also have Morning Microdose. So Morning Microdose is our second podcast. It is a daily dose of almost 30. It is the best of the best. So a clip, a teaching, a funny moment. It is between five and 10 minutes. There's no ads, there's no intro. It's just just the juiciness of the pod on Morning Microdose, the podcast. You can subscribe to that as well. Enjoy this one and we will see you on the other side. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. This episode is brought to you by IQ Bar. You can get 20% off every IQ Bar product plus free shipping when you text ALMOST to 64000. That's 20% off and free shipping when you text ALMOST to 64000. So IQ Bar is the bar of choice for me. I went through a period where I was eating a lot of bars many years ago and then I realized I wasn't feeling good. My digestion was off. It was making me sluggish. And the ingredients in the bars that I were having were horrible. They were words I can't pronounce. They weren't even real food. And it was something that was just not feeling right for me in my body. And so I actually gave up bars for a really long time until I found IQ Bar. IQ Bar is such an incredible, incredible bar with no weird ingredients. So it's the only bar that's optimized for your brain and body. It has brain nutrients, plant protein, and fiber with next to no sugar or net carbs. This is huge. So it has a great amount of protein. It has prebiotic fiber. It has brain supporting ingredients. It has next to no sugar and it's delicious. It's incredible. It's a crash-free breakfast or afternoon snack that'll really support you energetically through the day. So I'll usually have two IQ bars lately because I've been working from home writing our book. I'll have one in the morning before my workout. I'll have one in the afternoon. And I just feel incredible. I don't feel stuffed up. I don't feel like it's messing my digestion. It gives me a really clean energy and has helped support my brain with all the writing. It actually has things like lion's mane in it, which has been really, really incredible. It's the perfect grab and go breakfast or post workout snack, I swear. So it comes in incredible flavors. Lindsay and I fight over the banana nut. We will actually go at it because we both love banana nut. But my other favorite flavor is the peanut butter chip. I mean, it's like my love language is peanut butter and chocolate. So peanut butter chip, toasted coconut chip is really good. There's so many different flavors that are incredible. You can get a sampler pack, which is what I normally do because I love them all. And it is the number one brain and body bar in the US with over 10,000 five-star reviews. I mean, say no more. So we found a nutritious bar that tastes good. Hallelujah. Let's get you 20% off and free shipping by texting ALMOST to 64000. That's ALMOST to 64000 for 20% off your order with IQ Bar. I was just home with my sister and she said, what supplements are you taking? What are your favorites? What can I get? And I said, girl, I got you. We're going to go shopping at jshealthvitamins.com slash A30. We're going to use that 20% off code, ALMOST30, and we're going to get you everything that you ever need. JS Health is such a quality, incredible brand that's made in Australia by expert nutritionist Jessica Seppel. She's been on the podcast three times. She's a friend of the show, and they have incredible formulas for all of your needs from skin, digestion, stress, sleep, hair growth, and more. 
And Australians are actually really renowned for their high supplement standards. And it really shows in these vitamins. In the States, actually, there's way less standards. There's almost no standards for vitamin quality. So when we go overseas to places like Australia, we know we're going to get the best of the best. Let me tell you about two of my favorite products from Jessica. The first is the Detox and Deep Bloat. It's not a detox fad. It has nothing to do with weight loss. It's really about detoxification and gut health. Detox and Deep Bloat is their global bestseller designed to relieve bloating and support liver detoxification. It's a vegan-friendly formula with carefully selected ingredients, including turmeric, milk thistle, and fennel. It has a therapeutic supplement dose to support liver function and promote healthy digestion. I felt more confident and comfortable in my skin since taking it, and I swear by Detox and Deep Bloat. Also, the magnesium supplement from JS Health is the best magnesium I've ever taken. It is so incredible. It is the advanced magnesium, and it has three forms of bioavailable magnesium. And a lot of magnesium supplements do not have all the forms of bioavailable magnesium. They only have one. And a lot of them also don't have a therapeutic dose of it. JS Health has a therapeutic dose of the magnesium. And since taking it, I've been able to relax more. I have deeper sleep. I have better digestion. I'm less tense in my body. I have less stress. It has really changed the game. I love the advanced magnesium. So there's so many incredible supplements that you can find, whether it's skin and digestion, whether it's fish oil, vitamin D, metabolism and sugar support. JS Health has got you with the highest quality vitamins possible. So go to jshealthvitamins.com a 30 and use code almost 30 at checkout for 20% off your first purchase or your first subscription. So that's jshealthvitamins.com a 30 and use code almost 30 for 20% off your first order or your subscription. I'm so excited you're here. Yeah, truly. I'm so excited. <laughs> we were just telling Dylan, we've been emailing forever. <laughs> and it's just really beautiful. Like it always happens at the best time. And yeah. um, I was just so grateful to sit down with you today, especially this part of your journey. I know you have Sports Illustrated coming up, which oh, is so exciting. And you. I was just thinking of you because in some of your conversations previously, you know, when you were a model and when you're an actress, you had that journey of preparing for shoots, where it'd be like the life of preparing for shoots, mm -hmm. sort of around controlling your food and, you know, things related to your eating disorder. So I was just curious, like, when you're preparing for that, was there any prep or like, what was the difference now when you have an even bigger platform that you're on, like the dream platform of Sports Illustrated, and then it's a different you, like you're approaching it yeah. so differently. What was the experience prepping for like? Oh, freeing. Yeah. I felt so free yeah. and so ready. Mm -hmm. Like it was such an interesting moment where I was able to literally see the change mm -hmm. like in wow. front of me. Like I remember when I got the call and I was like freaking out and jumping and I just, that's what I said is I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Like I could literally go tomorrow and I would feel so mm -hmm. good because I I, you know, I live my life in a way now that like supports me mm -hmm. so that I can show up at any time. And that's really why I do it all. You know, I did it all for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. for so many years and it's so draining and so taxing. And um, it really just brings you down. Mm -hmm. I think living in that mindset and yeah, no, it's so, it's so exciting, especially at this point in my life Yeah, mm -hmm. where I'm 40, I have two children and, you know, my like younger self literally thought that if it didn't happen in my twenties, it was like, mm -hmm. well, honey, mm. you tried, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And then as I got older and I, I really dove deeper into this work, I, I was like, you know what though? I'm doing it. I I am I mean you can ask Dylan. I was like I'm I'm going to be in Sports Illustrated. Like it was like Dylan's nodding. <laughs> <laughs> I was very like I I tried to talk as if it already happened. Isn't that fun when you have that knowing? That knowing of that vision? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you there's that energetic of like the letting go, you know, that just kind of naturally happens yeah. and I think yeah. Yeah, it, it 
I would like for that to happen even more often. But when it does, I'm like, ooh, remember this feeling. Yes. Yeah. Remember like how I feel in my body. Remember just like what was happening around me, what supported me getting to this place. But what you said about, you know, feeling like you had to get it all done in your 20s. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is such a real feeling. Even like getting it all done in your 30s. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think is such a real feeling that so many of us, I, I feel like that. Sometimes. I feel like that before I have kids. Yeah. Oh, I, I Mine's like such a story of like, you have to do all these things before you have kids because after you have kids, like it's exactly. all over with. It's That's all what I with. thought. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And then you kind of like step outside of that voice and you're like, wait, mm -hmm. whose is that? Like, is that even mine? Yes. And I love... You know, I just love watching you and your trajectory because it's it's just further proof of like also how much more you become yourself after kids or like as you just get older. Mm -hmm. Like it's just such a beautiful thing to watch. So how did you how did you kind of navigate out of that mindset of like I have to get everything done before X, before I turn 30 or before I have kids? It was a conversation actually with Noah mm -hmm. when he he's very you know I know is just he's a planner mm. at heart and like has a strategic mind yes and he was he we were at a wedding and our friends had their daughter there and it was the most beautiful mm. loving like you just felt the love mm -hmm. with this little one there and not that you can't feel the love without a child there but it just did something and we both kind of looked at each other and we're like wow that's so special, like having a kid at the wedding. And then Noah pitched it. <laughs> he was like, look. <laughs> I love it. He's like, I really think, you know, maybe we should have a baby before we get married. And I was like, no way. Are you crazy? I am not doing that. Mm -hmm. And at first of all, I was like, uh, we're not even engaged. Nice try. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah. no, because I was very focused on like, I have no idea what I really want to do. I need to focus all of my energy and give it everything that I have before I bring a baby into this world because where is my focus going to go then to the child? And he was just very like, he was like, you know, I I actually think that that could be the thing that cracks you open. And then we we tried once and got pregnant. <laughs> and I was like, well, <laughs> wow. here we go. I'm cracking open. But I was <laughs> yeah. like, I was a little upset because I, I didn't really feel ready when do you? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know that there's ever a moment, but yeah. you know, I know there are times when you're ready to call things in. I certainly wasn't in that place, but it was really what opened me up. Mm. It changed me entirely. What about, was it the pregnancy? Was it motherhood? Like, I guess, what was that like, just in terms of like meeting parts of yourself that you haven't met before? It was the entire journey of really understanding what I was growing inside of me. Mm -hmm. And then also really relating it to this dysfunctional relationship that I had with myself and how awful to myself I was for, I mean, almost my entire life at that point. And it just made me want to love myself more. Mm. And it was, it was challenging because my body was changing. I was like, I didn't love the way I looked. I didn't love the way I felt. I had a really difficult pregnancy with both. And it's the thing that like got me to really like learning more about like, what is meditation? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. how could this help me? Should I try this? And like coming back to that place of um, finding another way mm -hmm. of doing it all. Because at that point, I was still in the mindset of believing that I had to work out for literally like two hours a day minimum mm -hmm. to think that I would be anywhere is, you know, in a place that I, I thought I should be. Could and be this was mostly mm -hmm. physical mm -hmm. it, because that was all I was focused on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I never really at that point understood. I, it's not that I didn't understand it. I didn't even lean into the mm -hmm. thought of like mind body connection until I started 
to meditate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is huge. Meditation for me is like, oh my God. It's like so unsexy. Whenever I talk about it, people are like, nah, meditation. You no, know, I know. People are like, <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. it's everything. It is Truly. everything. Absolutely everything. So, what was your internal dialogue like that before? Like before you kind of stepped into meditation, like meditation helps us see the internal dialogue. Like what were the things you were saying to yourself? Like what was the inter- internal conversation? Oh, it was, it's so sad to think about. I mean, it was And just, wasn't it hard to even say now? Yeah, out loud? I mean, it like, was never great. It was yeah. always something I had to fix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was never enough. Yeah. My skin was broken out. I had cystic acne all over my face, down my neck. Um, down the back of my neck, my back, and it was just awful. Yeah. Yeah. So like that was one thing I was always just like, oh, you're so ugly. Like, Hmm. yeah, having acne is is a different type of oh oh, a feeling of disgust with yourself. I was evil. Yeah, to myself. Yeah, it's it's a like a rage. Yeah, and it was like I mean it's so sad truly to think about, but it was like I didn't like the way my arm looked. I didn't like this part above yeah. my breast, yeah. between my armpit. I didn't like my, I didn't like anything. Yeah. I wanted my thighs to be a different size. It was just like nothing was ever enough. Mm-hmm. And then it's beautiful because it's like having a child helps you love mm-hmm. something else, but you remember you created it and it like gives you this ease. You see how kids are and you can be more in your body and just like have this ease that I just really look forward to. But um, when you were working out two hours a day, was that like the trend time when everyone was working out like fucking crazy? Yes. And what were you doing? Oh, I mean, I was doing a lot of high intensity yes. training. Yes. I mean, like everything. And and by the way, I always like to preface this because by no means am I knocking that style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just quickly, thank God, discovered that it was not working for me. And it was also increasing anxiety in my life um, before the class, after the class. It was just, it all started to come together. I was running a lot. Mm-hmm. I, was doing, yeah. I was laughing. With, I was I was doing half marathons all the time. You were. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. but, it's, but it's interesting. I didn't have a purpose in my life. Mm. So running was like, and it gave me something to work towards. So I was like, oh, this is my purpose now to run. Or it was like, oh, you create a tiny purpose because I had no purpose. That's really interesting to hear you say that because I, as soon as you just said it, I was like, that's what you were doing. Yeah. God also, was like, you have a purpose, but I'm like, I have no purpose on earth. <laughs> but also I was running away from myself. 100%. Like as fast as I 100%. possibly could. 100%. And the thoughts and all the things yes. that – Yes. came up daily that I didn't know how to handle. Yes, yes, yes. And that cortisol piece, like you don't realize oh the stress because I would do the same. I taught Soul Cycle and then I would go take like a berries class. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Like it was just – and I didn't realize. I thought I was like getting things out. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously like trying to maintain a certain physique and whatever. But then I saw it in my skin – I saw it in my stress levels. I was holding, like, interestingly, holding on to weight because my body was Me like, too. you know, I was too. I was yeah. at my like, I don't even like to say the word. Like, I just was at my least happiest yeah. place. Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't exactly. feel in ho- at home in my body. And how was your mm-hmm. like diet then as well? I'm curious oh, how that's it was changed. Very strict. Okay. Wow. Yes, I was just everything was extreme. Yeah, I paid such close attention to everything. And then it was like, and if I did eat the other thing, the shame that I put on myself, the guilt, which was, you know, that was definitely one of the leading culprits to me becoming bulimic Mm -hmm. because I couldn't, I couldn't sit with that. Like I hated Mm -hmm. the way that I felt after. And I was like, I have to get rid of this feeling. I was riddled with anxiety. Sure. Mm -hmm. But like it was just I couldn't find that balance within yeah. all of the things. And then it, I think that when you don't know kind of what to do with it or have access to the other things, you go even more extreme. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you remember what you did to yourself yesterday. You're going to run seven miles in Central Park and then you're going to work out for an hour and then you're going to swim. And it was just – it was a vicious cycle. Mm-hmm. It was really vicious. What was like your lowest point where you were like, okay, no more? 
Like something needs to change. Yeah. I mean, it was a real combination of nothing really working in my life at the time. Drinking all of my worries away, staying up really late, partying, eating, binging, Mm -hmm. purging. This like, it was like, you know, good during the week and then I'd lose it on the weekend and lose my mind. And it was just like one night of it and the sun coming up and just being like, what am I doing? Like, I hate the way that I feel. I like hate myself. And I was so done feeling that way. And I just, it was one of the first times I was literally like laying on the bathroom floor where I was like, Mm. I need help. And uh, even like saying that, I think for anyone Mm. that needs it and hasn't gotten to that point, like when you ask for help and assistance Mm -hmm. and you actually follow through with the next step of getting it, it just, I mean, it took a load Mm -hmm. off of me Mm. because I, you know, my entire life was always trying to Mm -hmm. show face, have this, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I wanted to maintain this real image of perfection and was trying to hold everyone else up. Meanwhile, I'm like crumbling. Mm -hmm. And I finally just hit that point Mm -hmm. of, of no longer wanting to live like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did getting help look like for you? It was calling a friend, Kim Mm -hmm. Strother. And I I was like, you always talk about your therapist. Like, can I have your therapist number? Mm -hmm. And it was like, that was the first step was getting into therapy for the first Mm -hmm. time in my life. This was many years ago. And wow, (sighs) I've done a few different forms of therapy since then. I currently do cognitive behavioral therapy, Mm -hmm. which I really love at this point in my life, because I think at that point I had to really get to the place of understanding why, Mm -hmm. like where the trauma stemmed from and why I behaved and showed up the way that I did. Sure. And it was really eye-opening for me, but also very hard. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I, I mean, I wanted to cancel therapy almost every session. Yeah. I was just like, I'm fine. Like, oh, that's totally. sweet. I love that. So good. And then I leave and I'm like, I know. I know. I'm like, what am I going to talk about? And then I'm like, oh, Jesus that's always Christ. <laughs> Dude. That is uh, really... That's why a lot Those of people are the best don't. Ones, actually. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to talk about. Oh, Because yeah. that means for me, my ego is not driving the bus. Uh-huh. Being like, we're going to talk about this email <laughs> that was like, whatever. It's like, I can go, I'm like, what am I talking about? I'm like, I was four. and you're like just can really be in it it's crazy it's crazy I uh, love therapy yeah do you go still I do yeah I go every other week that's what the same like every week for me it it felt almost like a force yes and I needed it to be this thing that fit into the flow of my life which but like still show up for it and it's been tremendous in my healing of things I didn't even know at this point. I I still needed to heal. Yeah. Well, it's like, I mean, just as you grow your business, you have your family, like, I mean, there's no like destiny. I feel like people yeah. think they get to a place totally. where they're like, I know everything about myself there is to know. Totally. Let me just maintain this and like have a good life. Or they heal one thing. They're like, I healed that. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. Right. Get ready. <laughs> but it's, yeah, I think it's the secret sauce. I me really too. do. Like mm-hmm. people talk about like, you know, I think career coaches are incredible. We've had them like, but there's something about how therapy affects everything mm-hmm. that like, when I haven't been in therapy, I'm like, what's that? What's missing? Like, yes. right. what's not quite right yep. right now? And it's having that place oh, yes. to process, yes. having that mirror or like that ability to have a conversation where you don't feel bad talking about yourself. Yes. Exactly. Or someone yeah. else. Even. Yes. 100%. I mean, for me, it has become this like sacred space yes. of no judgment. Yes. And just like talking about everything that I mean, honestly, 
I'm afraid to share with like, 100%. It's, yeah. I'm just, of course I of course. have my like yes. people, my trust, but like still, yes. I'm like, I don't know that I should say that out loud. Totally. <laughs> like, totally. That yeah. one keep in. <laughs> and with mm-hmm. friends, you're like, if I say this to this friend, you know, you, you don't want to muddy the water of friendship. No. And like talk about a certain friend to other friends. Sure. No, Because it don't. can just kind of, you know, that just muddies the water. It does. And so you can just kind of say whatever and just get it out. You can process it. You can see if you want to say something. You can see if it's worth bringing it up. And I remember my first year in therapy, I was like testing her a little bit. <laughs> and I realized this now, like I would say crazy shit just to like see if it would like trade, like see if she would like do something, like see if she would abandon me or like quit or like whatever. <laughs> so I would say just like wild shit. Like, like yeah, why well, I'm like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and like, she's like, okay. And I'm like, she's still here. Okay. <laughs> like we're doing this. Like had to really test, but it's like, yeah, that space of non-judgment, you can have that in relationships, but to like have someone that's unattached to everything too is really powerful. Yes. But very. now our therapist sees everyone You're like on our team. My therapist. Oh, I was like, you were <laughs> Yeah, no, no. Our, my therapist. I don't tell anyone my therapist. Yeah, I, I need to stop because everyone on my team goes and stuff. So sometimes oh, right. I just sit there oh, and I'm right. like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> like, I've shared my therapist because I just like, she's been so impactful yes. that I'm like, you deserve to be. Yes. Lindsay Tolchin. She's amazing. Oh, cool. She just like deserves yes. to have every client because mm-hmm. she's amazing. Incredible. Yeah. Mm. I just really like her style. Yeah. It's important. So the journey with your body and um, like finding food freedom. I know you did a podcast uh. on that and just hearing about that. Sometimes in my mind, I'm like, oh yes, that is the goal. Do you feel like you have it all the time? Is it something that wavers? Like I think so many people seek to have that. They're like, God, I want to feel that liberation, that freedom, that like peace around food. I want to feel like I can have my mental space back, my clarity back. Yes. And how has it felt for you? And like what have been some steps that people can take to to get there? Mm-hmm. First of all, I want to say that you can too. Yeah. Thanks. I'm I do. No, I really <laughs> yeah. believe that every single person can find that place Mm -hmm. within themselves. And and for me, it was using food as the catalyst Mm -hmm. to deal with all the stuff. And I always thought that I had a dysfunctional relationship with food, but in return, through really understanding myself and my habits and the things I was resorting to, I finally realized that I had a dysfunctional relationship with myself and the food was the vehicle in just really beating myself down. I, um, you know, I can, I can honestly tell you with everything inside of me that I have such a liberated Mm. relationship with food now that it's, it's so, it is freeing. And that is what really intuitively inspired me to share the food freedom episode. And I held back from doing it for a really long time because I am not an expert in the eating disorder space, but I felt very compelled to share my story Mm. because I, I wanted to give hope for anyone living in that cycle because it's, it's really, it's a really tough place to live. And, um, you know, I think through the, through the commitment truly, like, yes, therapy. I also had a health coach. I, you know, I like set up my team. I like had people who were helping me with the things I was seeing, um, a functional doctor and those things helped. I will never discredit those things. When I started to meditate consistently is when I strengthened that relationship with myself. When I actually, I learned how to love myself on the mat, like sitting down with my legs crossed and, or standing, walking, like, but truly the meditation practice that grounds me the most is when I'm sitting, eyes closed, Mm -hmm. and I go in 
uh, I started to really see who I was, like the beauty of my soul, of my heart, mm. and of what I'm meant to be doing. And it just, it changed the way that I treated myself. You know, I no longer wanted to hurt myself or talk badly to myself. And even it, it really started with that, like looking at myself in the mirror and catching myself every single time I would go back to those, you know, that negative way of thinking or being or talking about myself. And I would, st I mean, stop myself in my tracks. And of course, y y things will come up where I'm like, oh, I don't love the way I'm like, no, <laughs> mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. yeah. we're not doing that. Like that is an old story that is in the past and we have rewritten that story and we are going to focus on the things that we love, that we're grateful for. And it's, you know, it's really, it's transformed me entirely. I'm a completely different person. Mm -hmm. I really am. The, the catching, I think that's part of the process that I think some people mistake for like catching yourself in the moment, catching that thought mistake for a step backwards or, mm -hmm. you know, oh, it's not working. Like I still have that part. And we forget how strong mm -hmm. those parts have been or had to be. Mm -hmm. And we forget how like rooted they are and why they're so rooted. And that's why the therapy piece is so important. That's why the meditation piece is so important. So you can kind of just begin to actually see these things for what they are rather than think they are you. Mm -hmm. uh, that is such an important point because I think I mean, what meditation has brought into my life, like it's it's crazy. I keep looking at you guys and I'm like, I am so presently here with you. Yeah, like yeah. I'm I know. so like here you're... with yeah. you. I'm not thinking about what just happened, what I have to do. Like yeah. that is the beauty of yeah. a meditation practice. Yeah. I believe of, of the many things mm -hmm. um, that you will experience when you commit. But it expands your self-awareness. Mm -hmm. So instead of walking around completely unaware of how you are as a human, which unfortunately is the majority of the world. Mm -hmm. Like if you ever like been in line behind someone <laughs> at like a coffee shop and you're just like, wow. Mm -hmm. Like they don't even – Out to lunch. They actually don't even know mm -hmm. yeah. how nasty they're being, you know, and mm -hmm. it's – it's, it's something I, I really love. To, I love to observe mm -hmm. these behaviors because I, I, I know that the more we can make this movement so widely spread and approachable and accessible to make everyone really feel like they too can do it in their way, mm -hmm. yeah. in a way that feels good for you and showing up for that, I think we have the ability to change to change everything. Mm -hmm. And I really stand so strongly behind that because I have changed my freaking self. And mm -hmm. I know I was a psycho. <laughs> like, <laughs> by the way, she's still in there and I love her. When I need access I to her, know. she is great. You know? Yeah, like, when I heard you were a Sagittarius, I'm like, damn, that's, you're just. I'm a triple fire. Wait, Yo, what, so what's your chart? So curious. I'm a Sagittarius. My I'm my rising is Leo. Oh, okay. of course, <laughs> of course. And Come my on. moon is Taurus. Okay, cool. We got right. some Earth. Yes, Earth in there. Oh, that is Earth. Oh, that's Earth. Okay, you're right. Well, you probably so fire double fire somewhere fire. else in double your fire, right. sis. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> then you got that Earth. You. That's the like the that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, so, thank you. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh. The Leo is so cool. I love I Leo love Leo. Rising. Like, I love Leo. Le Leo Sun, Leo Rising. Like, no, it's just so easy for me to be around. No, is a Leo. No, is a Leo, and Benjamin's a Leo. No, is so grounded. He feels like a Taurus. He's to me. super grounded. He's like Earth. Like wow. he's very grounded, cool. but definitely a Leo too. One of the things I don't know cool. his. I, I by the way, I like am so 
immersed in this world, but when it comes to like no, this, babe, like you don't this stuff me. is all new. You know, no, 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 this no. is no. Me. I just fist. Like, well, literally. no, but I like <laughs> saying you know, I follow resources, and <laughs> yes. I'm like, I mean, I just you know, you don't want to be too far in. That's yeah. the thing is like you want to be like surface, but when you're in a light, literally at every party you go every to, party everyone's like, what's your signs? <laughs> and I'm like, I feel bad if people don't know them. They'd be like left out. So as I've gotten older and I'm looking to take care of my skin, we cannot forget about the skin on our body. I realized that I was forgetting about the skin on my body when I'm like using these amazing, incredible products like the products from Osea on my face and on my decollete. I was forgetting about my arms and my legs and my belly and my back. And I realized I wanted to give my body as much love as I was showing my face. So I made the commitment to get Osea's body line and it has changed the game. It has provided me this really beautiful ritual of self-care and self-love and made my skin absolutely glow. I look banging in tank tops. The legs are looking awesome. It's just been incredible. So let me walk you through my skincare routine with Osea. I use the salts of the earth body scrub. It's like a spiritual practice for me to cleanse and clear my body and aura after a long day. So I love the salts of the earth body scrub. And then after that, I will either rub on the Andaria Algae Body Oil when I'm feeling sexy and I want a little bit of a glow, or the Anti-Aging Body Balm is so incredible. The texture is perfect. It makes your skin look moisturized. It's this silky firming hydration that like we all just know and love. Their Andaria Cleansing Body Polish is also really good. It's like a one-step exfoliating, cleansing, and moisturizing shower essential. It has this unique gel to milk texture that's incredible. What I love about Osea is that they're so mindful about the work that they do. They are sustainable. They are vegan. They are cruelty-free. They are female-founded. They are made in California. They are in recyclable glass packaging. Every single thing has been thought about by this brand. And not only are they just so tip-top in their sustainability and their thoughtfulness, but their products work and feel amazing. I truly, truly, truly am so grateful. It feels like just heaven whenever I use their products because I know it's doing good for the earth and it's doing good for me. So anything you, that you get from them is going to be incredible. I highly recommend you try them all. I also love the Sea Boost. It's like this red mist that I'll spray on in the morning just for like a little zhuzh of my skin, but you truly cannot go wrong. So I want to hook you guys up and you can get a special discount for our amazing listeners, you all who I love. You can use code almost30pod at oseamalibu.com. That's almost30pod at oseamalibu.com. That's almost30pod, three zero, the numbers, at oseamalibu.com. One of the things that I, you know, not about Noah, but just about something he said that was so sweet when you guys were talking on your podcast about your journey and your career. And he was talking about how he you guys decided to have a baby and then you went through the different phases of your career and he was just sort of watching you. Um, and what he said was the process of elimination. Mm -hmm. And I had this in my career as well, where I had to figure out, okay, I'm doing this. I don't like it. I'm doing this. I don't like this, but I like this part of it. And I think <clears> people <throat> in their careers, especially for 20 year olds, yeah. so much of your younger audience, our younger audience, it's like, you don't realize that that's such an important part of the process that most of them won't get it right, right away. So right. can you talk about that journey? Oh my, I mean, I feel like I'm still there. <laughs> I need to do it for real. <laughs> for real, we're still in the process of elimination. Still, so yes. like, but that's what's fun. Yes. It is. It's so nice to be like, wait, what do I have to do today? Why did I say yes to that? You oh know? my God. I and to be like, what led me to the yes? And then you go back and you're like, oh, because it felt, yes. it felt a little pushed or I felt like I yeah. had to. Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, oh, I remember those days like it was yesterday because I was just watching Noah so passionately just like wake up every morning, move through his life and I was dreading every day. I didn't love what I was doing. What were you doing at the I time? Was, I was modeling full time, but That's I was right. doing a lot of fit modeling, um, which was amazing. I mean, I did it for a decade. It made me a very independent woman. I was, I paid all my bills. I did all the things. I had savings because I was, you know, I was working all the time. So very grateful for that. It just got to the point where I, in fittings, it's so funny because I, you know, I keep in touch with a lot of previous clients and 
someone would be like, oh, I'm not feeling good. And I would be like, well, how, how did you wake up? And I would literally like start coaching yeah. everyone. That's how I got into health coaching because I was so interested in how people felt and what they did prior, you know, like what it, tell me about your morning. What did you eat? How did you eat it? Were you standing? Were you sitting? And it, I wanted to talk during every fitting and you know, like you could talk a little bit, but like you're not there to chit chat. Right. And it was just, I, I started to feel not fulfilled because I could, fe- I could just feel it was like pouring out of me, but it just wasn't the time or place. And I had connected with a few people in the health and wellness space. And my friend, Oz Garcia, who's a nutritionist, was like, you know, I feel like you should meet a doctor, a friend, friend of mine. And at this point I had, I had graduated from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which was a massive like pivotal moment for me of kind of moving towards something that lit me up yeah, and doing it myself, like fully just major, you know, I was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to do this thing. And, and I remember Noah was so sweet and like, so happy that I was like trying something else. He's like, I want to gift you this. And I was like, no, I need to take care of this because if I'm doing this thing, I need to give it – it makes me show up more when Invest. I'm – Exactly, totally. investing in myself. So that was like a big moment of kind of just asking myself, why not me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not – why Why can I not, you know, mm-hmm. live a life of like my wildest dreams? I see people doing and I admire so many people who are and – I started health coaching with the doctor that my friend introduced me to. And it was it, it was so great because it helped me understand that it wasn't the thing after years of doing it. And I think what happens is, of course, fear sets in, right? And it's like, yeah. well, I'm actually killing it. Yeah. I'm making great money. This is really working, but something is missing. Yeah. I felt that you know, that real just misalignment. You know, I think staying really curious is something I have always done since I was really young. I've just always been like super curious how like, how do this neighbor have this house and that neighbor has that? You know, I've just always kind of been very aware of things and how people just like their energy or like this person seems Mm -hmm. so happy and is like dressed a certain way and this person seems, you know, it's just like the why. The why. Yeah, totally. Like where does it? I'm so, yeah, Uh everything. Because for me, I grew up very poor and Mm -hmm. thought that was, that was never happening for me. I thought that was a, you know, a completely impossible way of living and being and happy and fulfilled. It was like, Mm -hmm. that just didn't happen for me. And I believe just surrounding yourself around, I mean, in New York, living and moving to New York was just like a massive moment of that. And being able to really drop in with yourself and be like, this isn't it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) However, I'm going to stay with this thing because it's paying the bills. I think that's Mm -hmm. one of the most important things. Even when I wasn't fulfilled, I stayed and I would on my free time do the thing that fulfilled me. Yeah. And then I would like, instead of making it that Saturday afternoon thing, it became a Saturday and Sunday thing. And then maybe like a Monday night thing. And I just started to open up my time to the things. And by the way, at that time, I mean, the things still haven't changed. It was like going rollerblading doing yoga, <laughs> meditating. I'm, go, I'm going to go okay. rollerblading on Mother's Day. I've yeah, decided. I, love I was like, that. you know what I want to do for Mother's Day? I want to go rollerblading. Oh, that sounds so fun. <laughs> but it was like really tapping into the things that lit me up. Yeah. And they were simple, mm-hmm. but making more time for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's a really important point about, you know, staying with the thing that is paying your bills and not just because it's paying your bills, but there's also and I'm speaking to the people listening who feel like, okay, I just want to like quit my job and do the thing that I really want to do. And I know that's how some stories seem 
you know, on the outside, if you're looking at people on Instagram, et cetera, but it's so important to have that transitional period because one, I think like you probably learned a lot from Mm -hmm. the job that was like, not quite it, but you're like, actually there's a purpose and why I'm here. And then also you didn't have the stress of like putting everything on the thing that you were kind of Mm -hmm. trying to pursue and grow. It's like, let that be the thing that you gladly show up to and have like the joy for not like you need to be the thing that makes me money. You need to be the thing that's successful. And it's hard to to distinguish for people. I think it's a very existential thing because you're like, I'm not doing what I yeah. love. Right. Oh gosh, you everybody. completely hit the nail on the head, yeah. by the way. It's huge. It is. Yeah. Because it is. It's guiding you towards the thing. But I, I mean, it was – Staying with it when I didn't want to was what got me to signing up. And it's also like building your um, like capacity for discomfort, uh, you know, which I, I think it's like guys. I've really had to learn that like in my 30s where I'm like – because I was uncomfortable in my 20s for sure, but I don't think I was consciously uncomfortable. But when you're like kind of consciously uncomfortable with certain things – now I've tried to reframe it where I'm like, okay, we're like, this is a muscle that we're working oh, and yes. what's really un- uncomfortable right now might not be so uncomfortable in a few months. Has there been anything, you know, that you've really, whether in the past or even recently where you're like, oh, that used to be so uncomfortable for me mm-hmm. and you really like stayed with it mm-hmm. and oh. it's become kind of something that you're able to hold. Oh my God. Yes. I mean, I'm thinking of so many things right now Mm -hmm. (laughs) at this moment in my life where I'm like, I'm just really like, I'm not even leaning and I'm like diving in face first to the discomfort. There's like the lean Mm -hmm. has happened and I'm just like, sure, show me, Mm -hmm. show me what you've got because I'm feeling called to elevate to the next level. Mm -hmm. I was the most uncomfortable person on camera. It was stop. Yeah, that's uh, that's not even. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Invalidate you. Yeah. Also, we validate your experience. (laughs) (laughs) I believe you. But question. This was pre Dylan, and (laughs) I would. uh, I mean, my girlfriend Alice Panikian would come over, and she's like, "We have to get you on camera. We just have to get you comfortable." Because I would like be like. Hey, I'm gonna make this almond milk, and then I would just, I'd be like, no, ugh, I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of judgment towards myself too, yes. which I think a lot of people do. You watch it, and you're yes. like, no, yes. But I would set up the little tripod, and I made the almond milk video, and it was so <laughs> cute. bad. <laughs> it was cute. I sure it was cute. cute, but it was just like I was nervous, and I was talking fast, and, and then it was like I couldn't even let like a real moment land. I just yeah. move on to the next thing <laughs> with an uncomfortable like <laughs> joke or something. Yeah, no, I so couldn't like... even lean into a joke. Like yeah. it was just not good. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't be myself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was like, well, I, mean, this I saw the natural. girl do this you almond know? milk yes. video and like this is the way she did it. And I was very much living in that space of you know, I had my people that I followed that I admired yeah. and I tried to do it exactly the way they did it. <laughs> and I think people do that with you now. For like, sure. honestly, everybody that she I know is it. like, she's a little, I, do you see uh, it? Because of everyone that I know does. is like, what do you mean? <laughs> dude, hello. Everyone I know is like, you know, I'm kind of trying to like the Melissa Wood Health vibe. I'm like, oh, you too? <laughs> I literally am like, hey, you guys, we've got to not do that. <laughs> Thank you. It hurts, it hurts my feelings sometimes. I'm like, you guys, know, I wrap it up. Yes, I I think it's Feel it free. can help you. <laughs> Thank you. Feel free. No, I'll go. I'm gonna go off. Okay. So it is helpful to have someone that you admire mm-hmm. and something you are inspired by. And I will tell you one thing I learned from Gabby Bernstein was. I remember because I would go, you know, I would go to Marianne Williamson. She was speaking in New York at the time. And I remember Gabby sharing this story when she started speaking and she was so, you know, she admired Marianne so much, but she found that she would start to talk like her and like Mm -hmm. shape her. It it just, she was embodying 
someone other than herself. And it was really helpful for me to hear that from someone I admired. Yeah. And to be like, okay, I think it is great. We are all inspired by someone, right? And there's also just like so many moves that you can do in workouts. Like we got a lot of similar moves, fine. But I think what is missing is people dropping in to their true authenticity. And I know the word authentic could be thrown around, but like Mm -hmm. to really find your thing, your way of doing it. And, you know, it was, it was a friend of mine, Tara Stiles, who is the founder of Strala Yoga. I did my teacher training with her and I was like so insecure. I was like, I, I don't know. I, it's like, this is the way I'm doing it. And she was like, but when you're at home and you're, you know, you, you're blending your yoga and your Pilates and like, that's your thing. And I, I felt like it was, but it was almost like, but it was different, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think it's, it's really important to leave our own mark on things. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I posted this, I posted this the other day because, um, People are wild. I love my community so much, by the way. They'll send me pro- – they'll be like, you know what, Melissa? This mo- – or the way she oh, said yeah. They'll just- do it with us too. Yeah. <laughs> this music, we've heard this before. <laughs> and I really try – I mean, I would fully be lying to you if I sat here and I said certain things didn't bother me. A hundred percent. Of course, certain things. And what I've learned to do is to not watch it. Yeah. And, and to just let it go with love, really. Sometimes you got to like dig a little deep for the love part. And then just focus on the thing that I'm here to do. Mm-hmm. Because if I stay so clouded with what everybody else is doing, and by the way, that was like back to that almond. I was so focused on the way everybody else was doing it that I had no yeah. way of doing it myself. Sure. And then when I let all that shit go. And I just left my laugh on there. Mm -hmm. That cackle went on a little too long. And I was like, you know what? But like, that's really me at my core. Mm -hmm. And I just let myself be myself, Mm -hmm. you know? And and it was when things really started to change. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you get messages that affirm that. You know, I think that's, I think that's when I started to understand that like, Instagram, at least for me, wasn't really about the curation. Like people just really wanted, they're like, they're like, oh my, you're so yourself, you know? And we're like surprised. And I'm sure you get that too, where it's like, it's not an art. Cause I think, you know, like you said, it's really about a dropping in and allowing, but I think what people are seeing all the time is this like highly curated, highly just stylized, which works for certain people. Yes. But man, it feels good, I'm sure. And you can flow more with your content and just how you show up. And as much as you show up, you wouldn't be able to do that if you were so worried about no. trying so to be a productive certain when way. you're yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? When you're like, I'm myself in meetings, I'm myself with my family, I'm myself here. So like you're able to like do everything. Yeah. Oh my, I mean. Because you're not fronting. Exactly. And I am like, the way that I work, like I, do, I personally like, planning too far ahead and like planning posts. And it is so hard for me. I mean, of course now look like things have changed. You know, I had, it was like just me at one point when I was filming in my living room on my $24 tripod. And then I slowly started to hire a few people and we were just a tiny little team of five. And now at the, the point that we're at, it's like, I need to share certain things at certain times. And like, of course, my team will be like, we need you to collab with M- the MWH account. And I like one thing that I really, really stay true to is like, no matter what the plan is, if it doesn't feel right, I'm just like, I can't post that. I can't post that today. Yeah. And of course, my team is amazing and fully trusts my process of of really totally. just staying true to it because – I think when you lose that, you you start to lose your essence, mm-hmm. you know, and it just becomes so much more about this kind of algorithm mm-hmm. or chasing that, which, I mean, we could talk about that for days, Yeah, you know? 
Yeah, I think about for the people that like want to emulate you and like I've heard so many of them, so I can't even imagine how many of there are that exist. It's like I always just hear it and I'm always like, okay, so there's – you're adding a step in your journey in life because it's like, okay, you're going to try and be this person and then you try and be this person, but still the destination is over here. So now you're just making your journey longer oh, by yes. adding the step of trying to be someone else. Melissa Woodhull. This is the the quote – that I, well, I wrote this on my story because I, I think, you know, we always hear imitation is the highest form of flattery. I don't think so. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Like, I don't believe imitation is the highest form of flattery. The highest form of flattery is giving credit where credit is due. Like, it's okay to share where you got the source of inspiration, make it your own. You know, like I can think of so many things, so many people I'm inspired by mm -hmm. that have helped me plant a seed. But in my own way, in my own voice, it's just, it's really important. I think mm -hmm. it's just, it also comes with age. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're younger and still throwing things out there and you don't fully know who you are, it's totally. it's easy to be anyone but yourself. I remember that feeling. Mm -hmm. Me too. Very. Yeah. Very, very did, much, did, so. It didn't work. The almond mm -hmm. milk video didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think then too, you're worried about like, you're like, I'm telling people about almond milk and you're worried about the outcome of almond milk. And it's like, people don't really care about the almond milk. I didn't even know what my focus was. I mean, I <laughs> could do it like the girl that I saw. A hundred percent. And it yes. didn't work. Yeah, totally. I am so excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Vegamore, because it feels like the answer to all of my prayers, truly, madly, deeply. For so long, I felt like I couldn't have it all with my hair. I felt like I couldn't have a brand that was cruelty-free, that was clean, that had really dope branding, that worked. And a brand that made my hair silky, shiny, and then also thick and long. And Vegamore has done just that. Their grow routine full kit is where it's at. It has the shampoo, conditioner. It has the biotin gummies. It has this amazing mousse that makes my hair like massive and thick and just like amazing. It has so many of the products that you need if you really want to grow your hair in a real, real way. I am obsessed with it. I love all of their products. I also love their moisturizing shampoo and conditioner line. It's called the Hydrate Collection, which is really, really good. So Vegamore is truly the answer to all of our prayers, giving yourself the hair that you never thought you could have, giving me all of the things that I look for in clean beauty brands in one specific space. And with Vegamore, you can have visibly thicker, shinier, longer hair without the harsh ingredients. All Vegamore products are 100% cruelty-free and are never formulated with potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. So if you listen to the podcast, you know that we're very mindful about the things that we put on and in our bodies. So when you're thinking about hair care, you have to think about pore-clogging ingredients. You have to think about hormone disruptors. You have to think about plastics in these types of ingredients. And for me, it's actually really important that the brands that I work with are cruelty-free. There are still brands that test on animals, and that for me just doesn't work. So I love that Vegamore is cruelty-free. So the key here is consistency in your routine to have the most beautiful, healthy-looking hair, and Vegamore can support you in doing that. I use the Vegamore Grow Serum every time I shower, and my hair and scalp are absolutely flourishing. So I'm so excited to introduce you to this brand. I love working with them. They're incredible, and I really, really want you to try it. And you know, we got you with a discount because that's how we do. So you can go to vegamore.com slash almost 30. That's vega, V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R.com slash almost 30, code almost 30 to save 20% on your first order. That's vegamore, V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R.com slash almost 30, code almost 30 for 20% off your first order to get the most luscious, gorgeous hair possible. I'm curious, you know, just last thing on social media, like how... Yeah, how you see it now, you know, as mm. as you evolve and as you kind of have your team. I know you still run your social media, but I'm just curious, like, how you approach it now. Like, what is the energy towards social media? Do you have time off that you take? How do you handle the eyes on you, the energy all the time? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, definitely, I like, zipping my invisible cloak yeah. before yeah. I go out which has been really helpful because I am the type of person like I'd walk around like this and like if you know yeah. connect eyes I could feel energy and now while I am 
very friendly, very outgoing. I've just realized that I need to savor my energy. So that has been something when I'm out in public that's been really helpful. Yeah. And it has, it shifts things. Like Mm -hmm. I think it changes how people come up to you and the way that they do. And it's been really helpful. Um, For social, you know, I am, I mean, I run my entire account. We have a great girl who is running the MWH account who will like make certain reels for me or do things for me, which is so helpful and amazing. And I'm very hands-on. It has to be, you know, the way that I would do it. And any, anything that I've tried that hasn't been just, it just never works. Um, and not even talking about like views and likes because I think we're in a place right now where like a lot of people could think if if you're putting your complete energy on that, that like nothing is working. But I also think social's in a different mm-hmm. space right now. Like sure. it's in a transitional period. Do you feel that? Yep. Mm-hmm. I think Definitely. eyes are on other platforms mm-hmm. and you kind of just have to keep doing your thing and not get so focused or swallowed yes. by the numbers. Um, I love the creative. I mean, I'm like, my creative meetings are my most exciting meeting, meetings mm-hmm. all week. And I also need a ton of space mm-hmm. to be creative. I've learned that like the morning is magic for me. It's when I come alive. I'm like post-meditation high. I'm going to take over the world. I am ready to just share all the things that helped me get to this place because I didn't feel like that before. Like she's yeah. a new woman. <laughs> Every day I'm a new woman. Yes, yes, I just am rebirthing different versions of myself. The meditative <laughs> Melissa that I'm like, thank God, girl, you meditate. Like there she is. Because <laughs> the non-meditated meditative version is very different. Oh, it's wild. Yeah. Oh, what? I could cut a... <laughs> but I know. My non-meditative is like, yeah, really... Yeah. Spicy. We don't want to know her. I, oh. I, I, let me think. My non meditative. No, I just her. get like a short fuse. Yeah. Same. Or like my day will get, like my day will just go and I'm like, what just happened? Right. Like everything mm. just happened and I didn't know, like I couldn't catch it. Like right. I can't catch the day. Yeah. Like, it comes rushing in and oh. you don't meditate. Yes. Like I can't stop. I'm like, whoa, everything's. But we were talking a little bit before because you're sensitive. Like you're a sensitive soul. Very. I'm so sensitive. How do you deal with that? Very sensitive. Running a huge team, being a public figure, being a mom, it's a lot. It is. I really honor my sensitive side. When I am working with people like during the process of hiring, I always like to share that because I think it's just helpful to understand how certain people are. And for me, I'm like, if you have something to share with me, like first thing in the morning – is not the time. Like I'm, I'm sensitive. I just, you know, I have so much on my plate and, and to manage those emotions for the entire day or the entire week, it's just like, it's a load. I know sometimes, you know, timing is not always on our side and certain things happen and have to be delivered to me, but that's been something that's been really helpful for the team, really, um, understanding that and honoring it. For me, I, I also just, I like, I mean, I share pretty openly on social when I'm like having the days, which are all the time, Mm -hmm. which are like quite often Mm -hmm. because it is a lot, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm definitely at this point in my life where I, I never imagined having a team this size. Mm -hmm. I, I had, I had like visions about things. But now it's, I'm like, wow, this is so much bigger than me. Mm -hmm. So it really makes me like, I switch into a different gear where I'm like, you know what? I, I mean, I very rarely, I'm like looking for wood. I feel like I need to knock Knock. on wood. Oh God. On the floor. Hold on. Knock on yourself. Uh, well, so what, that. sis? I do, I do okay. <laughs> I feel like I needed some, like, actual Some wood. real ground. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so now it's bigger than me. So I I show up. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. I show up fully. I, and it's not just for me. Mm-hmm. 
I, my mental health and showing up for me is my number one priority in the day because I know that if I do that, that I'm a much more centered, loving mother who's more compassionate and I'm a better boss. I'm a better leader in general. So I, I do it every day, you know, like there, I, I have these moments at like the end of my day and I'm like this, I had a really hard day today, but like what I do provides for so much more than just me now. And I do not take that lightly. Mm -hmm. I am so driven by really the serve. Like I'm so in, in the space of service that it just, it, it's ignited a fire in me mm -hmm. that I, I always knew was in there, but I didn't know how to access it. Mm -hmm. And now I have full access and I know how to utilize it. So watch the fuck out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like that feeling that, that you witnessed your husband have like every morning when you wake up and it's, you know, it's time is such a weird thing because you're like, I want it now. Yeah. Like, why isn't it happening now? What's wrong with me now? Yes. And it's just beautiful to hear your story and just it takes time. So and it much. takes yes. like being present for your life. And it requires certain things to happen, like you becoming a mom or like yes. you, you know, having this particular career short term. But it's like, you know, we just I'm thinking about our audience a lot yeah. because they want everything now. Yeah. Sorry, that's not to too. say I've been there. Yes. <laughs> I did too, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like it's yeah. it's such a normal human feeling. But that's why I like to hear, you know, the trajectory of people's lives and careers because you just realize what really it required. And also how long life is too. Because like, yes. let's and talk to you in 10 years. You. I mean, there's mm -hmm. going to be so okay. many different iterations of you and identity. Do you have a hard time like uh, transitioning identities? So from mom to to mm -hmm. boss to wife, public figure to wife. And then also when you're going through a transition of an yeah. identity, a shedding of, a dying off of, and stepping into new. I used – that was one of my biggest challenges. Huh. It was like I would – you know, I think it's – for me, because I am so friendly and I just like, I'm such a yeah. lover mm -hmm. and I want to like hug everyone. I want to hear about your day and I want to know what's going on, which is me. And I never want to lose that. However, there's a time when I have to be a boss and I have to really step in mm -hmm. to that space. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that I have to change who I am but it does change the way that I show up. And I, you know, I actually just started working with an executive coach and it's something that I'm so aware of right now. It's like, okay, I have my mom hat on and then I have my creator hat and then I have my boss hat. And it's like to really embody that part of myself is really important to – to lead and not just in the business or for my community, but, but at home. And that has been something like that's currently something right now that I'm, I'm, I'm working on strengthening mm -hmm. because that was also the thing that was kind of tearing me down and where things weren't working mm -hmm. Sure, in sure. business, in life and, and understanding there's, there's boundaries that have mm -hmm. to take place. And I mean, you're you're looking at a girl who like started and, you know, when Dylan started working with me, Dylan's on every podcast, by the way. Dylan's always with me. So <laughs> I, I, I keep I saying it. Like, I'm like, Dylan, just, you should be. I love her. <laughs> I just love her. <laughs> we need Dylan. I mean, I used to, when I was pregnant with Eleanor, I would like, we would work from my bed. I'd be I mean, like, get in the bed. Like, Hello, needed to learn boundaries. <laughs> you can have one employee without boundaries. That's the rule. That's true. You can have one where there's no boundaries. That's the rule. And she's still with me. One so. non employee, you're just a little treat for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> what is one thing that you wish people knew about you? Hmm. 
that you're like, okay, all of these people, like, or even the people that maybe misunderstand you, like, what is one thing you're just like, I really wish people would get this about me or know this about me? That, like, I don't know why, just, like, got me. Mm -hmm. Um, That I care so deeply. Mm. I really care. And I, like, I'm so moved by that with everything and, and things really affect me because I'm I'm such a heart leader that I I do this and and I I work the way that I work and I I mom the way that I mom because I I want to make an impact like I want to sh- to really share that there's there's another way of doing things and that we can do it with really finding this like this love for ourselves and exuding that that love with everything that we do and i think you know i've i've had so many things said to me which i have pretty thick skin as sensitive as i am and i don't really let things bother me like i used to but you know I think people assume certain things have been handed to me. And and by the way, I give two fucks about that. However, I think the most important thing about me is is the depths of my soul. Mm -hmm. Like I I feel like I'm scratching the surface of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. It feels like that. Yeah, it truly does. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's so nice. So beautiful to see and – I cry whenever people cry. <laughs> we both have like a tear on our lips. I have like, I, yeah, like two tears. I, and it like gets through in. the makeup. So it's like my tan. Um, it like cuts Thank through my, my my bronzer. <laughs> but that's what it is. It's like, oh my God, when, yeah, sometimes it's like when things get, look so perfect or look so easy or look so curated or look so all these things. It's like, oh, I wish you knew everything. I wish you knew the layers of it. I wish you knew what it takes. Just like, yeah, how much do you care? Like, I feel like that sometimes too. I'm like, God, I wish you even knew. Like, I really fucking care. Yeah. And I really care about what I do and how I impact people. And, you know, it's not for nothing. Like, it's – and it's not just for the things. It's like this is a calling. It's a calling. It's a calling. It's literally called me. Yes, 100%. I I never – new. I mean, sure, I had like ounces of visualizations, but the more I aligned my actions to meet things I desired in my life is where the unfolding happened Mm -hmm. and where I believe it happens. When you're in that flow of really connecting to that true alignment with yourself because I faked it for so long sure. and I was good at faking it. Mm-hmm. I still am. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best. I'm obsessed. This is fun. No, we're the best. Best friends uh, ever. I you don't even so under love happy, you. But. Don't tell me twice. <laughs> <laughs> I you in my fucking pocket. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, there are always going to be people who assume and think think certain things, but to the level of impact, success, reach, um, and, and really positive influence you have, it's hard to do that without actually caring. Yeah. Like it's, it really is hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah. People can buy followers. They can do all they want. They can do all the things, but like, you know, and I'll kick myself when I rewatch this, but it's all energy. It's very important, especially as you are building something like you are that is going to change people's lives, mm-hmm. if you are doing so from a place that's not in alignment, it wouldn't be where it is today. I agree with that. So like, yeah, I just, I just wanted to reflect that because to the people who like also care, it's like, oh, I, f- I feel that deeply from you Yeah, in yeah. your work. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah. with social media, you can tell. Yeah. That's, I'm so grateful for it is like, oh, it's, it's a whole thing, but it's like, I'm so, I have so much gratitude because you can tell. Yes. Um, And even like going back to, you know, comparison or embodying other people, like 
energy and intentions, you can't yeah, you yeah. can't fake them out. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, which is nice. And <laughs> I, yeah, one hundred percent. Sometimes I'm like, or, she's gonna, she, she's not like. Yeah, that's by fact. the way, that's not gonna or work. You can for a period of time. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes, short period. The longevity. Yes. Won't live on because it's not in here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Completely. That's like where it's, yeah, just watching our space because you've been in the space a while. We've been in the space a minute. It's like this, you know, probably the same maybe. It's like you can kind of see when it hurts me when people are inauthentic. Me too. Like, it, oh, I, like, and it's actually a thing I need to like work on in therapy because it hurts me so much where I'm like, oh my God, they're not who they say they are. They're not who they act like they are. But I'm like, it's all going to shake out. <laughs> all work out you know like what do I don't know what I want from it but it can be painful <laughs> it can and it always reveals it's yeah, always. always you guys want to know the name <laughs> <laughs> we got the name check the show notes <laughs> yeah, literally um okay last question sweetie um what are you really excited about right now mm -hmm. like what is like just like making you lighting you up I bet you can't share anything about your no. next step. <laughs> Dylan. Honestly, yeah, Dylan. I, <laughs> Sign language. I like, this is annoying. And I feel like if I heard someone say this years ago, I'd be like, ugh, you're so annoying. I am so excited about life. Uh huh. It's the mm -hmm. best. I just feel so much enthusiasm for all of the things that I'm doing. And even, you know, the days where I have like endless meetings, back-to-backs, like the things that we are working on, I am just like, I look forward to every day. Yeah. And even my days, sometimes I'm like, how am I going to do that? And and you know what I'll tell you, because this has been, oh my, just like a roller coaster of a week. And I literally was like, oh my God, how am I going to go to the pot? And I was like, yeah. I don't know. And I was like, you, you say yes to only things that work in, in your day. And it's funny um, because like even having this conversation with Dill coming up the elevator, she's like, this is going to, this is like what you need. This is exactly Dilly. what I needed. <laughs> yes, I no, I'm telling you for real. It was oh. funny on the way here, I, I intuited your trepidation because I was like, I just want her to know I'm really grateful she took the time out of her day mm -hmm. when we were in our car on the way. I was like. I, I want you to know I'm very grateful you took your time yeah, out of your truly. day. Thank you. Yeah, I was That's... sending you that psychic message. I, I like, feel I too. feel that. Yeah. I really do. And yeah. I think it's, you know, the power of connecting yeah. with humans yeah. that, first of all, you're inspired by or that like mm -hmm. this has just been, it's like I'm leaving on a different high yeah. from Same. this, from being around people that I'm like. Yeah. You know, I this is this is what I want to be around, yeah. and I only surround myself with that. Mm -hmm. So I know when I say yes to something that mm -hmm. you know I'm like, you're going, or there's a good lesson in this one. Yeah, so just yeah. stick That's around true. for it. <laughs> you're like bitches. But <laughs> the power of community. Yes, everything. It makes me. I'm I'm so excited every single day. I know. And mm. my babies and my husband and I just I have a beautiful life that it's I've created, best. and it wasn't always this way. Yeah, I hated my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't like myself, mm -hmm. and now I see the beauty in all the things. And it's just a really fucking awesome place to live. Mm. It's awesome to like be present for it and not want the next thing. Yes. I don't. We, I mean, I could literally go. list off That's a million amazing. things. We're working on this. First of all, I'm not a goal oriented person. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a goal. <laughs> I'm what obsessed a, with that. I don't have goals. That's perfect. I have desires. Yeah. I have deep and desires. And like visions. Yes. Like I feel like you're a visionary. I am. Yeah. I'm definitely a visionary. But like for me, it's like you can taste a desire. Yeah. You feel it. You're like, I really mm -hmm. love that. You know? Mm -hmm. And I like to move towards desires, but I love to be right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love mm. that. That's so beautiful. <sighs> Thank Thanks you for, for being coming. here. Thank you. I love you. You, you. love you. This is Truly. been longer.
Yeah. <laughs> a joy and a delight. Well, yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I literally don't worry. We I'm do such it. weird shit at the end of Nuggle our podcast. You guys at we'll the put end. like our fingers in with people. <laughs> well, like, no, because like, yeah. you feel like, like I've. I'm a touchy. No, I could feel I'm like. A touchy we've, how many times have we touched? Touchy. We pointed yeah, we... I'm like, <laughs> I just love a little touch. Okay. And I just want to come. Do you like when people touch? Yeah, I love okay. it. Okay. I love it. Because I, I love to give just yeah. like some energy. Some good juju. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. We love you guys. Thank you. We'll see love you later. You Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much. Again, you can find Melissa at Melissa Wood Health on Instagram and melissawoodhealth.com. Thank you so much to our sponsors for this episode. You can check out all the discounts in the show notes as well as on almost30.com. You can learn more about Almost 30, what we got going on here, our membership, courses and programs, and so much more at almost30.com. Thank you, Melissa. We love you. Until next time, everybody. We'll see you guys soon. soon. Bye.